Hi there guys, welcome back to the channel. So obviously the transfer window has been open just under a day and Liverpool are already doing a few things. I uh, didn't expect to do a video today. Um, I'm on the mend, I feel a little bit better. Uh, a lot better than I did yesterday, but yeah, still not 100%. Anyway, you don't want to know about that. Thought I would just quickly go over some of the recalls that Liverpool have done today, shall we say. So we've obviously had... Fabio Cavallio has come back, we knew about that, and Fabrizio Mano put out 19 minutes ago that Liverpool see Cavallio as part of their future plans, potentially from next season. The Premier League clubs have approached Liverpool to sign him, but he is not for sale. Fabio will leave on a loan deal, as reported yesterday. No buy option clauses will be included, and Liverpool only want game time assurances. Now... We've touched on this lad a few times, obviously, when it was first mentioned he was going to be called back. I questioned it a little bit because when he left, I kind of felt like he'd cut his ties with Liverpool, the way he was talking about Klopp and the club. But it seems to be that Liverpool still see some sort of future for him. And in all fairness, I don't know where I could see him playing at Liverpool. Again, he's wasted out on the wing, so he wouldn't be a so-called Salah replacement if Salah was to be sold in the summer. But I can't kind I can I don't think he's got the engine to be a part of this midfield either. So I don't know, I'm unsure about where we'll see him. Potentially as an understudy to Sabozlai. I don't know. Elliot moves out to the wing. I don't know. I, 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 if we're more bothered about getting him game time now, then he's not really gonna get much game time when he comes to next season, as far as I'm aware anyway. But with that's for next year. We don't know what the, the team will look like then and um, what changes will take place. And then we've also recalled Owen Beck today from Dundee. They've put a statement out saying that Liverpool Football Club recalled Beck. Dundee Football Club can confirm that Liverpool have recalled Owen Beck and his loan with Dundee has ended. Owen signed on a loan for Dundee in the summer and quickly became an important player for the D, putting in fantastic performances. Now... Uh, I should have probably loaded this up before I even started this video. I was going to have a quick look at what his stats are so far for this year. Uh, let's have a look. Owen Beck. Here we go. So. It says here that he made 17 appearances. It's got 12, two, 12 goals of a left back. Bloody hell, bring him back, bring him back, start him. <laughs> uh, 17 appearances, two goals, two assists. Um... Played 94% of the start of the minutes and 94% of the time he, he was a, a part of the starting 11. And he's, eight, he's involved in 18% of their goals. That's really good, is that? Um, but yeah, obviously he's been recalled. His contract runs out in 2026. And I would see that as potentially he's coming back now in the short term. Obviously with Shimikas and Robertson out injured. But he might go back out on loan again towards the back end of the window, just he's just coming back for cover um, for the short term, I think, potentially. Which is why I poo-pooed, shall we say, <laughs> them Anthony Robinson uh, rumours that came out. It makes no sense to go out and sign a left-back when you've got two on the books. You know, you'd only go sign one if you were selling one of them. Um, but it, it does make more sense to bring back a, a loanee who has been performing fairly well at, on his loan um, and bring him back for cover, basically. Um, so, yeah, that's that on the recalls. Now, today we've also had an article published by James Pierce. Now, I'm going to go through a few bits of this, basically, not the whole thing. And he says here that Liverpool have succeeded all expectations this season so far. After a summer of sweeping changes, Jurgen Klopp has masterminded a Premier League title challenge as well as guiding the club into the Carabao Cup semi-finals and the last 16 of the Europa League. Their progress has been all the more remarkable given a succession of injury setbacks. Matip is out for the season uh, while Andy Robertson dislocated his shoulder Shimikas has got a broken collarbone, Thiago's out of a hip injury, Stefan Bajtetic is out with growing pains and Ben Doak has a knee injury. McAllister is on the brink of coming back but Liverpool are about to lose Salah, their 16 goal top goal scorer to the African Cup of Nations and Endo to the Asian Cup. 
which both start in under two week and run to the end of the sec to run to the second weekend in February. Now, <clears throat> it gives you a little bit of a breakdown of the last three January chan transfer windows. So last year we spent forty four million on Cody Gapo. The year before we spent fifty million on Luis Diaz, and then the year before that we spent one point eight two million on Ben Davies, Kabak <laughs> uh, on loan, and Baytetic for two hundred and twenty grand. Now I'm going to skip forward just a little bit here. And he says, how much money is likely to be available? Despite missing out on the riches of the Champions League qualification, Liverpool invested significantly last summer with an outlay of around £145 million on the midfield rebuild as they recruited McAllister, Sabozlite, Endo and Gravenberch. And they recouped £52 million from sales. There isn't any set amount available for the window that opens today. FSG judging each potential deal on its own merits. Recent years have shown that FSG is willing to react decisively when convinced that a transfer makes sense financially. However, Liverpool's relative high net spend in the summer coupled with... Oh, God. <laughs> However, Liverpool's relative high net spend in the summer coupled with FSG's self-sustaining business model means it will be a, be a surprise if they splashed out a large amount of cash again this month. You always talk about what transfers as if they would be the easiest thing in the world, he quotes Klopp here. Just bring in a player, find the money for it, as if we have endless money. I really don't understand it. Ugh, I haven't, I'm not well enough to have this conversation, but I'm going to keep reading the article. He's made this next one here. Who makes the key decisions on the signings? The three main figures regarding transfers are Klopp, uh, George Schmatke and FSG president Mike Gordon. Klopp effectively decides who Liverpool should pursue and then it's down to Schmadke to try and negotiate a deal within the financial framework acceptable to the owners. Schmatke was a short-term appointment, attempted at retirement last summer. We know this, yada, yada, yada. And then it goes on about Dave Fowles, Barry Hunter and the director of research Will Spear are also there to give some sort of input and draw up shortlists. What are the priority positions for Liverpool? Now, he's put losing Matip to a long-term injury has left Liverpool depleted at centre-back. Klopp's options in that department have also been further reduced by needing to play Joe Gomez at left-back after injuries to Robertson and Schumikas. With Robertson not due back till late January, early Feb, Excuse me. Sorry, guys. That leaves young defender Jal Kwanza as the backup for Captain Van Dijk and Ikat Kanate. Kwanza, 21 this month, has been a revelation since being handed his senior debut against Newcastle in August. And I agree with that. I think he's been really good. Um, but I do think that bit there does tie into the whole Owen Beck um, recall. Is if Robertson's not back till end of January, early February, once we get a little bit closer to the time where the window's closing, we might have a bit more of an understanding of when Robertson's due back, then you could potentially send out uh, Beck again on loan. Giving game time to young fullbacks in Chambers, Connor Bradley and Scallion would free up Gomez to play centrally. Liverpool could also turn to Nat Phillips or Reese Williams, who are out on loan for the first half of the season at Celtic and Aberdeen, and as far as I'm aware, they've both not played. So, yep. Uh, Matip's contract is out at the end of the season. Uh, with him turning 33 before the next one kicks off, a centre-back has been has long since been on the shopping list for 2024. Bringing that plan forward six months would certainly provide a boost to the club's title challenge, and, but can they find the right calibre of player at the right price mid-season? Um, and then it goes again, quoting Klopp. Tell me a club who wants to sell a top, top centre-half who could play for Liverpool. It was never Wonderland where you bring in a world-class centre-half until the other is fit again. Other clubs don't put them up, put them under the Christmas tree for us and say, take it and use it as long as you need it. Now, what do we know about who the targets might be? Going about the rumour mill, blah, 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 blah. Shimikas's injury against Arsenal recently led to reports of Liverpool pursuing Fulham's, international, Fulham's US international Antonio Robinson. But as things stand, they aren't in the market for a left-back. Signing one to cover such over such a short period before Robertson is fit in about a month just wouldn't make sense. And I do agree with that. I do agree with that. said it three times now. I'm not going to say it again. Uh, they continue to be linked with holding midfielders. 
but won't be going back in for Andre, who is expected to leave the Brazilian reigning South American champions, Flamenzi. Liverpool asked about his availability in July after being frustrated in their attempts to sign Lavia, who later left for Chelsea. Klopp ended up signing Endo instead, and with McAllister returning, coinciding with Japan's international imminent departure to the Asia Cup, the manager is currently content with his midfield options. He also has Thiago and Bajtetic to come back from their injuries. Thiago, who hasn't played since April, will need to be replaced this summer with his contract expiring. At centre-back, Liverpool will be looking for someone aged 23 or under, who they can work with and develop rather than buying the finished article. For example, there's Sporting Lisbon's Inacio, who is 22 and has attracted interest from several Premier League clubs and has a release clause of around £52 million. Liverpool are relaxed about their squad death currently, but another defensive injury this month would surely lead to a pre-deadline change of heart. I don't like that one, that last line, because it kind of mechs out the club are not planning already, which they would be, like... You know, we, we planned obviously to sign Diaz and Gapo in the summer after when, you know, the January we signed them. So you would think that Liverpool do have a player in mind for a centre back who's going to come in and replace Matty. So you could try and bring that one forward. You know, you know, Inacio may not want the move, especially with his game time, might potentially be limited with the Euros coming up. So he might want to stay at Sporting until the summer. And, but these other players out there, guys, that you can go inside. I know that a lot of people are after this kid. He's a left footer. He could come in and be the backup to Van Dijk. I get that, 100%. But I don't know. I, just, I don't know if I'm just taking that the wrong way. Just the way he's worded that. Where, like, Liverpool are relaxed now, but another defensive injury this month would lead to a deadline change of heart. It kind of sounds like they might be going for, like, a mad panic or something. I don't know. I might be reading too much into that. Um, it basically says he is, well, Cavallo will be on his way out. And Liverpool will consider offers for Phillips, Reese Williams and Bobby Clark, um, who could be loaned out again. But yeah, guys, that's it for the James Pearce article. Basically, you know, discussing where Liverpool stand. There was another article that came out today as well from the Echo and about FSG and how they're going to be much quieter in 2024 than they were in 2023. But, you know, the, they can't be too quiet because they've got to replace the... Uh, Sporting director role, aren't they? When Schmadka leaves at the end of January. You know, everyone's forgot about this. Schmadka leaves at the end of January. We need to get Trent's new contract sorted out. Van Dyke's new contract sorted out. Potentially offer more Salah a new contract if we're not going to sell him in the summer. You know, they're three players that will be entering the last year of their deal come the summer. They need sorting out now. So, yeah. Don't bode well that article about if Liverpool are going to sign someone or not. But I would potentially think that you know it could be on the cards that Liverpool do pull the cat out of the bag and bring someone in maybe it is a Nacho it could be somebody else um, let me know in the comments down below guys what do you think on that do you think Liverpool should bring in a centre back or a DM both like what are you thinking for January guys anyway leave me a comment and I'll catch you in the next one